<laughs> Hello, Hello love bookworms. bookworms! My name is Icy and I'm Ivy and welcome to our booktube channel. channel. And today we'll be doing a book talk on Sai by Neil Schusterman. So we both read the book this year and we both liked it. I actually know people who have read it and liked it too as well. So I've seen Sight on booktube. I don't know from who, but I've been seeing this book from other booktube channels. And I just saw it at the library. I was like, okay, I've seen that. It must be good, so. I actually watched Christine from Poland Bananas Books book talk on Sight, not knowing that she had already borrowed it from the library. And I was like, I gotta read it. She read it first. I was so mind blown. AF. This book is a young adult. I wouldn't say dystopian. It's a futuristic kind of world. It's set somewhere 200 years from now. Somewhere in the future. Yeah. It's about a futuristic world where death doesn't exist anymore and there's no illnesses. Everything's in balance. And since there's no more death, there's people called scythes who are in charge of gleaning people, which means killing them forever, like getting rid of them forever to maintain population balance. And since the people are immortal. Oh yeah, they're pretty much immortal and immune from diseases. They can't really die unless the scythe, a, a scythe gleans them. them. Dead. And there's this other figure, aside from the scythe, called the Thunderhead which is an artificial intelligence or a cloud where everything is digitally uploaded like everything in human history everything all the footage from from outside surveillance cameras recordings everything is uploaded onto the thunderhead and the thunderhead knows everything and you can actually speak to the thunderhead and it will give you advice so it's kind of like an ai instead of a government the world is run by the thunderhead and the set so there's two main two bodies, bodies of... that rule the world not really rule but maintain balance of the world these two entities don't interact with each other they don't interfere with one another for some reason i don't know but that's just how the book is so we follow two main characters named citra Terranova, and rowan damish they're both chosen to become scythe apprentices by this scythe called scythe Faraday. when these two were chosen citra really hates scythe them on the other hand rowan feels eh, indifferent about things. That's the synopsis of, of the, the book. book. Neil Schusterman's mm -hmm. writing style is like the best. Very clear in describing everything. It's like nothing was complicated. I actually understood how the Scythedom works and it's believable. Mm -hmm. When really when you think about it, it can't really happen in today's world. In today's world! <laughs> <laughs> it can't really happen in today's world but it's when you read this, you believe it, and it's like, it's happening, it's happening right now. And the way of the character development, the world building is mind-blowing. It's like you're part of it. You want to be part of it. It's so fast-paced that before you recover from a twist, there's another twist. And then you can't put the book down because you're like, well, I'm not, there's oh, no, what's I'm, I'm, what, what will happen? There's nothing predictable. There's nothing foreseeable in this book. It's just like... <laughs> which is good. Many mind-blowing twists. There were more than one. Which is... makes this book the best. Although the first part, there wasn't much action because Neil Schusterman introducing the two characters, the world, how the sight them works. The action happens maybe in the middle. So if you're, you're planning to read this and you think that it's boring, continue please. Continue. You won't be disappointed. Some people think. I've, I've seen reviews on uh, Goodreads, so I was hesitant to read it. There's like two, two stars, three stars, four stars. It deserves like more than five out of five. The average rating was four something. Yeah. Good job, Neil. And so if you're planning to read this and you haven't read it yet, please leave now. Go out and buy the book, borrow the book, read it so we can talk about it. And come back to us. Yes. 
<laughs> press resume. Resume. When you're ready. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Bye bye. Okay, so now you're ready. Okay. Right. We'll talk about sex. So there's this thing called nanites that can control your feelings, your hormones, the pain, the way you think. And it makes sure that what you're feeling is in balance. So you don't feel super angry, super in rage. So the Thunderhead controls these nanites which are part of the people's bodies. Like to make sure that they're healthy, make sure that their emotions and mental things are intact. Right? There's this thing about splatting, the term splat that Neil Shusterman used. Since you can't die in this world, you can jump off the buildings. You can die. Be revived a few days later. He calls them deadish. So the Thunderhead sends all the ambudrones in the ambulances to recover the body and sends them to a revival center where they live again. It's like nothing ever happened to you. And there's this thing called turning corner. At first I was like, huh? Turning I still don't know how people can turn a corner. I it's don't know like how they do it. But they kind of revert back to an age that they desire. Like even if my grandma, she can like be a 25 year old woman and have a new set of kids again. It's <laughs> weird. Isn't that for sites only? No, for everyone. Oh. Rowan's grandma turned a corner and now he has like baby aunties. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's baby weird. Baby aunties. That's weird. And we have these people called Tonis. <laughs> To worship out of a big tuning fork. Tuning fork. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but I believe that. <laughs> They're like a religious group. It's like Christianity because they also have like different types of Tonists and they believe in different things. But they choose not to interact with the Thunderhead. So they, they have their nanites turned off. They're kind of weird because <laughs> they're funny. And when you strike the tuning for they're arguing about it. It's either a A minor or a G sharp. I don't even know the different tones. I don't know. But I, I like the concept of having like a religion. It's like they don't want to be part of the, the Thunderhead. Anyway, so we have the sites. So these people, they get stuff for free and they get special treatment so they don't get like money. They don't get an allowance. People just give them houses or cars or clothes and food. Stuff like that. So each site has their own method of gleaning and it's either by poison, by stabbing, massacre. <laughs> Yeah, massacre. And it's just up to the site. They can be very unique. And they have also this Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments of Scythedom. Which is pretty interesting. First commandment is thou shalt kill. Pretty self-explanatory. Thou shalt kill with no bias, no bigotry, or malice after that. They can't be like racist. Or they can't kill someone because they, they got agitated by that person. Yeah. <laughs> Commandment number three. When a site gleans someone, they will grant immunity to the family of the person they have gleaned. So they're automatically immune from gleaning. gleaning. Four. If they find a person to glean and then that person runs away, the site has to glean the family of that person who resisted. Five. So when you become a scythe, you're 100% scythe. You can't go back to your family, your old life. You're gonna be a scythe for your whole life. And if you become a scythe, your family will be immune for the rest of their lives. Number six is... So scythes are required to keep a journal. And they have to write down how they glean every day. It's like a reflective. They have to reflect on what they've done. Number seven, scythes can't kill scythes. Eight. When you're a scythe, you can't really have lavish possessions like cars, houses, any other clothes, jewelry. The possessions that you can only have are your robe, your ring, and your journal. Not everybody gives you everything anyway. <laughs> yeah. Number nine, you cannot have a family. You cannot have boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend. No, 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 boyfriend, baby. girlfriend, baby, <laughs> love child. <laughs> Number ten, thou shalt be beholden to no laws beyond thee. So those are the ten commandments. And for the color of their robes, they wear robes, and a site has a certain color, and they cannot wear black. All colors except black. I'm wearing black. 
And of course, they have a ring which they get once they get ordained and they... The people who will have the immunity will kiss the ring. And that is the interesting thing because the ring gets the DNA of the person who kissed it and then it's sent to the database exactly. somewhere. Somehow sites have a database. And they cannot be gleaned for like a year. They get one year immunity from gleaning. Once they're ordained, they get to pick their names, like Scythe and the name of a philosopher well, like from a, our age. It's like Scythe Faraday, Scythe Faraday, Scythe Mercury, Scythe Goddard, Scythe Frida Kahlo, Scythe Xenocrates, Scythe Prometheus. And then there's this conclave that happens four times a year every quarter every season so it's named after the season like winter conclave summer conclave mm -hmm. autumn 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 conclave autumn conclave <laughs> <laughs> what happens there is they we talk about issues like it's like a government meeting and then they, they wash their hands mm -hmm. from killing people it's like they're refreshing themselves their the next ritual. And what I also found interesting is like how they are called sites and then the leader of a certain area. In this instance, it's mm. Mid America. So there's a high blade. He runs like the affairs of the site and he's like the president. And there's this oh. thing the highest of all sites, Supreme Blade. Who's High Blade? High Blade is the Sinocrates in Mid America. Yeah. It's like every region has a High Blade, the representative of one region. And then the Supreme Blade, Grand Slayer, and then Supreme Blade. So there's High Blades who represent the state. High Blade Sinocrates is the leader, president of the presiding body of the site in Mid America, which is the setting of this book. Yeah. For the <laughs> characters, there's so, Citra Terranova. She's the one who doesn't really like the Scythedom very much, but she was chosen by Scythe Faraday. She was very resistant to the Scythehood. Like when she first met Scythe Faraday, she would talk back to him. And Citra's mom would be like, Citra, Citra, shut up, Citra. Are you trying to get all of us clean? But she was just like, and there's Rowan Damish. So he's one of the... I think he was pretty ordinary. Nothing really special. It's like he ran out of fucks to give. <laughs> he described it. himself as the lettuce of the sandwich, like, because the lettuce isn't really much, I guess. And he was really indifferent. What's the sandwich, the title? Like, in his family, he was mm. the lettuce. So we move on to Scythe Faraday, who took Citra and Rowan under his wing. Scythe Faraday is a father Year. He is very consistent with his gleaning and there's this certain way that he researches about the people who he will glean. He researches his subjects very carefully. And there's this specific way, it's like someone who has done a heroic deed and there's someone who has a dog or something. It narrows down to one person. So Scythe Faraday plays a big role in the first half of the book plays a really big role in Citra and Rowan's life. And then, after Scythe Faraday, we get Scythe Marie Curie. For some reason, I get an image of President Coin from The Hunger Games in my head because Scythe Marie Curie had silver hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Julianne Moore. She gleaned one president. Oh yeah, she gleaned like the whole political party. Like the last corrupt. president of the United States. And she was famous for that. And well, she yeah, was grand well, yeah, for that. that. The grand dame of death. Death. Ooh, interesting. Grand dame. I like that. And there's the high blade Sinocrates who's the leader of all the sites in Mid-America. He almost drowned. Not because he was fat. He <laughs> was wearing that heavy robe. And then there's the bad guys. Scythe Goddard. Oh my god. Scythe Rand, Where do Scythe I Volta, begin? and Scythe Trumps. I was so shook when they first gleaned the plane. I was like... And he finds pleasure in gleaning taking out so many people at once. I think every week, every other day, he goes out on a mass gleaning. And he throws a party. Yeah. Behind Scythe Goddard is yes. Scythe Rad, Scythe Volta, and Scythe Chomsky. What I 
liked about this book is in between the chapters, there are journal entries from the Gleaning Diaries of the Sites. Like we get some from oh, Scythe Faraday, Scythe Faraday, even Goddard. It's really nice to see different kinds of sites. And we can see their history of how they glean, their methods of gleaning, and their thoughts. And you can see Scythe Goddard. He's very obnoxious. Yeah. You can see by his journal entries, things too high of himself. He's a super bad guy. You can't find anything in him that good. Then there's so many twists. Scythe Faraday chose two apprentices. And then they show up at the first conclave since Citra and Rowan got apprenticed. It was a summer conclave. There was a big discussion of why Scythe Faraday picked two. And then Goddard was like, you can only have one. And whoever gets ordained glues the other. It's like, wow. Citra or Rowan dies in the end. After that, Scythe Faraday commits suicide. suicide. And I was thinking, oh, did, no. did he commit suicide? Did someone kill him? Did Goddard kill him? Goddard totally killed him. Oh my god, Goddard, what the fuck? Rowan and Citra were left without uh, Scythe. Scythe Kiri stepped up for Citra. And guess who stepped up for Danish? Or Goddard! They were investigating the suicide or murder of Scythe Faraday and they found this note in Scythe Faraday's belongings saying, I shouldn't have trained her, she's too smart. High Blade Synopathies automatically thought of oh, Citra. And then she was a suspect for his death. And I was like, oh my god, Goddard, what the fuck are you doing? He's been planting this year. I thought oh, that was Goddard. All the time. Like, there was this big chase. Citra tries to run away from the high blade and then she splats. That was the time that she communicated with the Thunderhead. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, she wasn't a sight yet, but yeah. The Thunder had told her significant things, like you're gonna play a big part in this. Oh, yeah, I yeah. didn't really say who did it, but Thunder had <laughs> gave a name. Uh, Gerard yeah, something. Um, Gerard, I was like, Goddard, Goddard. And she tried it. just like, huh? 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 Ooh. She woke up from the revival center. Scythe Kiri helps Citra escape from the high blade. And then Scythe Kiri gives Citra a cryptic message of follow this. Go to this follow place this. and then if you see this guy you'll know what to do. I was like, what is happening? It might be a trap. No! I know. At that point I was like, is Scythe Kiri one of them? One of the people who want them dead. It might be Goddard. It's a drop. At that point, you're just like, what's happening? You get so disoriented. You don't know who the bad guy is. And Scythe Faraday and Scythe Curie's romance. <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was cute. Because it's one of the commandments that they're forbidden to. Well, Scythe love. Scythe Curie was Scythe Faraday apprentice. And she kind of fell for him when she was a young girl. After all these years, they still help each other. Yeah. And then surprise! Citra finds Scythe Faraday hiding in the jungle. And I was shook. She was I shook. I was shook. She was shook. I was shook. Citra was shook. I thought he was dead. Me too. I was like, and the bad guys, they lean people in an airport. In the food court of the mall. Oh yeah, there's this office, right? Oh, yeah. And they just went inside and killed everyone. Everyone was they helping people escape. That was a bit messed up. And then the last, hopefully last, mass murder is the one in the Tonis church. I didn't know that there were kids. Scythe Volta, who was pretty close with Rowan, was feeling bad because he had to glean the children. But he still did. But he and felt so, bad and then he self gleaned and then Rowan was like, Ah! No, my friend! And then he went to kill the other brand in Chomsky by burning everything. So he burned the evidence and stuff. He cut Goddard's head off and I was like, Yes! Go kill that bitch! Burn it down so and they won't be revived. Yeah. And since the Thunderhead doesn't really tell the Scythe food anything, the Thunderhead saw what happened but they can't really alert the Scythe dog about what happened with Rowan. High Blade Synocrates didn't know anything about how Rowan killed Goddard. Citra was ordained and she became Scythe Anastasia Romanov. That was surprising. But it was a good, a good name. She was like firm because she was oppressed. 
Sorry, I had to change the camera. It might sound different, it might look different, but yeah. We're on. Besides Anastasia gets ordained. Then you know how they're like, oh, the one who gets ordained cleans the one who doesn't get ordained. So Scythe Anastasia gets the ring and then she punches Rowan in the face. And then Rowan's DNA got into the ring sent to the database. So he had one year immunity. Which was like, there's a car waiting for you outside. And then Rowan's like, Whoa. And then he goes into the car and Scythe Faraday's in the car. Like, He's like, what? Ooh, I know, right? It's too many twists happening until the very end. Amazing. I was pretty much shook with all the twists. Mm. Most of all is the one that Scythe Faraday was still alive. It's like, what? I like that part at the end where Rowan kills Goddard. But we'll have to do a book talk on Thunderhead. If you're gonna be a Scythe, what would you mean? Um, Scythe Peppa Pig. <laughs> Scythe Peppa Pig. <laughs> or Scythe Dora, the explorer. <laughs> and I have a backpack. <laughs> Or Scythe Baby Shark. <laughs> I don't know. And my robe would be like pink. And my method of gleaning would be... Oh, I have to think about this. We talk about methods of gleaning more in the next one. So that our <laughs> book talk about Scythe. This is like the best. I thought nothing would be able to trump the Illumine series until... They're nothing alike, but I love the Illumine series and I couldn't find anything more mind-blowing until... How many books will be in the series? I think there's the third one. Is it's there going to be three? Oh. Okay guys, so what are your thoughts about Sai? How many stars would you rate Sai? I want to hear from people who didn't like it. I want to see why. If you didn't like it, please drop a line down in the comments below. We just want to know why they didn't like it. And they have to explain. We're all different. Anyway, let us know your experience with Scythe and if you're gonna read the next book and if you're excited for the third book and if you're gonna read more of his books because he has a really good writing style. If you've read his other books, let us know if they're good. Don't forget to like this video. Like and subscribe. And subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye.